Machine shop. Yeah, boy. Today in Outward, we're going to create the Hermit of Doom build. This is honestly a pretty easy one to set up, and the insane power of your attacks will make you feel like Elat himself. The cool thing about this is that when we're fully buffed, our damage in one single spear thrust will hit with 74 lightning damage. That doesn't even include the raw or physical damage on top of that. Then we have lightning blasts which not only stagger enemies by large amounts, but allow you to kill challenging enemies such as immaculates in as low as 4 blasts. This is the lightning build I've been waiting to get my hands on, as it's very easy to use and the power it puts out can get you through a lot of the game with very short fights. So let's get into this and see how you can become a Hermit of Doom. Step 1 for this build is to talk to Boorak before leaving town. If you have a spear type weapon equipped, he will teach you Simeon's Gambit. You can also talk to King Simeon over in Levant, but that's much further away and costs 50 silver. This is a counter skill that deals massive damage and impact if you manage to block an enemy attack with it. Luckily, this is one of the very few, if not only, counters that still hits even if you miss. It will just deal much less damage if you miss, but still give you some result. Simeon's Gambit can get you out of many situations just by mastering the timing in which you need the counter. On top of this, we want to use a spear because it's a very friendly weapon type. What I mean by this is it's very easy to hit enemies without taking damage. You can actually use the special attack of this spear to either jump forward, gaining distance, or jump backwards, getting yourself out of harm's way. The spear is a much safer weapon to use as it pokes forward or backwards, giving you more time to see and dodge an attack. Iron Spear, Fang Spear, and then Horror Spear is a pretty good progression to work for considering the Horror Spear is one of the best spears in the game. If you follow my Money Guide video, you can actually work your way up to the Warleg Spear, which is what we will end with. That route not only earns you all the money you need for skills, but it sets us up pretty well for this build. Mana is the next thing you want to get your hands on. Head to either of the two ley lines in the game and grab three total points. This will grant you 60 mana overall. After you finish your faction quest, you of course are granted the Peacemaker's Elixir, which provides 20 stamina, health, and mana, bringing us up to 80 mana. This isn't a ton, but we don't really need a lot. Our helmet will give us enough mana reduction to make this amount perfect. Then of course we want to know what faction to take. Considering this is a lightning build, we obviously want to take Holy Mission. That faction provides many benefits we need, and I'll just go through the list and see what we get once we're finally done with it. Acceptance grants plus 8 hot and cold weather defense. Infuse light, which grants us an easy and reliable way to infuse our weapon with more lightning damage. Purified, which grants plus 20 decay resistance, making us pretty tanky against any decay attack. Divine Assistance offers negative 10% stamina and mana cost. You could get more damage instead, but this skill helps with that mana and I prefer it, so I have closer to the infinite stamina I so much enjoy. Sanctified Protection offers plus 2 protection, which is just nice for extra defense. Lastly, we get Elat's Intervention, which grants 2 barrier and 5 protection, but that requires building the Chapel in New Sirocco, so it's a bit later down the line. The Holy Mission Faction Quest provides easy access to lightning damage, extra defense, and nice quality of life attributes. You could also go with Heroic Kingdom for more damage, but I generally enjoy a more well-rounded character rather than just highest damage possible. Finally, we have our skill trees, and the good news is, all three of these are very easy to use and understand. We start with Cabal Hermit. This is just beyond Ghost Pass in the first region, and we will take every skill except Wind Infuse. We will already have a fast weapon that deals good impact, meaning it isn't necessary for us. Also, Wind Sigil is one of the highest sources of damage in the game, considering you just throw it down and use Spark. You deal 85 damage with no buffs at all. With our lightning buffs, we will have this easily reaching much over 100 damage every time you cast Spark. The Breakthrough is going to buff our damage with Boons active, and Conjure actually can be used with Lightning Sigil as a way to deal over 200 damage with only our Chestplate Enchantment. Then of course Reveal Souls grants you one of the easiest way to gain back mana, and Weather Tolerance buffs our Weather Defense and Decay Resistance which is really nice to have. Overall, this skill tree gains us untold power without anything else. I highly recommend grabbing this tree early as a wind sigil clears over half the game with almost zero effort. Plus, the quality of life from Cabal Hermit feels remarkable and actually unmatched with this build. 
Then consider the fact that this build is also called Hermit of Doom, and it's kind of required. Next, head over to Levant for the Rogue Engineer. Be aware that if you are to replace any skill tree in this build, I recommend taking Hex Mage instead of this one. However, I personally think Rogue Engineer works like a charm, and here is why. Sweep Kick is nice to have, especially since it instantly knocks enemies afflicted with confusion. Stealth Training is also nice because it grants extra stealth, although I rarely find much use of it. The entire reason for using this skill tree is the Breakthrough, Feather Dodge. This is a skill that is S tier and outward and can even be powerful if you use a backpack that doesn't impede your dodge roll. The skill lets you dodge unimpeded with any backpack and decreases the stamina cost of your dodges by 50%. People don't always realize this, but dodging is pretty punishing to your character. It immediately takes a large chunk away of your stamina and in longer fights will run you depleted of all stamina. An easy way to fix this is to block rather than dodge or simply run out of attacks. With Feather Dodge, you turn outward into a Souls game. Dodge every attack with no care in the world as it costs you almost nothing. This is extremely helpful for newer players since dodging doesn't hurt as bad. But it also helps you focus more on just the combat instead of how much stamina you have left. Also the backpack we want does impede your dodge roll, so this skill takes that away. In the end, this skill tree brings our build a nice feel and makes it so we never need to drop our backpack or run out of stamina. Our last skill tree will be Warrior Monk over in Monsoon. This is a staple skill tree in most of my builds as it offers too many things to pass up. Brace lets you block attacks and is arguably the best skill in the game for getting more openings and embarrassing bosses. Focus grants you the Discipline Boon which ups your damage and grants you two skills you use in combat. The breakthrough is simple, Plus 40 stamina, doesn't seem like anything crazy, no, but man is extra 40 stamina nice to have. Honestly, it can be a game changer. Then we have our two higher tier skills, Perfect Strike and Flash Onslaught. These both require the Discipline Boon to use, but unfortunately Flash Onslaught gets rid of the boon on use. To avoid this, first use Perfect Strike and then Flash Onslaught. Now use Brace and gain back your Discipline Boon and you have Perfect Strike every time it cools down. This allows you to almost always have a high powered attack as Perfect Strike ignores all enemy resistances and inflicts pain, so the enemy becomes weaker to physical damage by 25% and has no way to decrease the damage you're doing. This will often kill many enemies right out and those who don't die become too weak to do much after that. It's very useful and powerful 100% of the time. Flash Onslaught should always be used at the beginning of a fight because it does high damage and inflicts confusion. That makes them much weaker to impact damage, letting you knock enemies down almost instantly. Consider the fact that we have Sweep Kick and this becomes even more useful. Sweep Kick instantly knocks down any enemy inflicted with confusion. So use Flash Onslaught and you can knock everything in the game in a single press of the button. A very useful tactic, especially when it comes to bosses. Warrior Muck is an insanely powerful skill tree and will grant us the ability to stagger anything we come across. We almost have this build set up, but there are a few pieces of equipment still missing. The backpack in particular is very important as we'll be using the Lightmender's backpack. This grants us plus 10% lightning damage and since we have an unimpeded dodge roll, we can always have that bonus. You need to complete the Strange Apparition side quest to get this item, and I'll try to leave the link in the description below to a video that shows you how to get it. But this thing isn't that hard to get and really boosts our power. Then we want to use a Luxury Tent because it's my favorite and it buffs our stamina which will be non-existent if you use this one. Seriously, the bar hardly moves at all most of the time. Of course we do need a weapon and the World Egg Spear is the perfect choice. It does a large amount of lightning damage, has a fast attack speed, and gives you nice distance from your enemies. This spear is arguably one of the best spears in the game and has an amazing lightning effect that ups its wow factor. You can also check out my money making video which I will leave a link to in the description as it goes over how to get this spear pretty easily. Essentially it's in the Abrasar Desert above the Electric Lab. Considering this weapon deals lightning damage it really is perfect for our build. And considering it was used by a member of the Kabbalah Winds it fits our theme as well. But we can actually buff this even more. Enchant it with Poltergeist. This takes away some of its physical damage and converts it to raw damage. It can't be buffed from anything we have here, but it is unblockable. This is the damage type that Perfect Strike deals, and with this on the Whirlix Spear, it cuts through every enemy. 
Surprisingly, few things in this game are resistant to lightning damage, meaning we're really poking away with a stick that shreds enemy health. The raw damage is really nice to have against things such as gargoyles and golems, which are highly resistant to physical damage. You could also enchant this with Whiplash instead for more physical damage, but turns out Whiplash has a pretty poor damage increase and is useless in a lightning focused build. The Whirlig Spear is amazing with this build, and seriously, in the end, one hit with this thing will deal over 70 lightning damage. It's incredible to watch stuff die as quickly as it does. The last thing we need for this build is a good set of armor. To start, we are going to grab the Master Desert Veil, which means placing an Elite Desert Veil into a Legacy Chest. Out comes a helmet offering negative 15% mana cost, as well as good stamina reduction, movement speed increase, and one protection. This is a really nice looking helmet that gives you a mostly covered face. And its stats are really nice with this build considering it covers up all the negatives we will have with our chest plate. Then the mana cost lets us use mana more freely which trust me is just awesome. Now before I go over this guy's enchantment I do have a recommendation. Try to create a character who is a female Aryan. For whatever reason a lot of the different races in this game have a face that clips outside the mask. It's not that big of a deal really, but once you notice it, it's impossible to unnotice. I actually recreated my entire character for this four times because it was bothering me so much, and I landed on the female Aryan and finally had no face clipping through the mask. Just a little heads up because I can't be the only one that would bother. And this helmet will also be enchanted with Aegis. Nothing crazy, but it offers an additional one protection, which honestly this build needs. It's not particularly tanky, except for decay damage, and this will give you a bit more breathing room when taking damage. Silver armor will of course be our chest plate, as I think anyone who's caught any of my recent streams knows it's one of the best chest plates in the game. It can easily be bought from the blacksmith in Monsoon, and sometimes Berg. It has really nice defense with two protection and two barrier. It keeps you very resistant to decay with 30% decay resistance. Combine this with the skill from Holy Mission and the Cabal Hermit buffing the decay boon and you take almost no damage from decay whatsoever. This is a very nice setup to have for Caldera and especially against those Scourge enemies. Enchant it with Spirit of Monsoon for 15% corruption resistance as well as a whopping 25% lightning damage bonus. This one enchantment buffs this chest plate tremendously and gains this build a large amount of extra damage. The Spirit of Monsoon enchant really makes the silver armor shine in outward and provides lightning builds with the best possible buff for damage. It makes pretty much every other lightning buff look pitiful and will allow the Whirlig Spear to skyrocket in damage. For our boots, we want a legacy chest, a pair of black plate boots. This gets us the Orcalcum boots, which have good stats but also look quite nice, especially with this armor we have. These provide a bit more defense against physical attacks as well as a decent 11% impact resistance. Impact resistance is a lot more important than people realize and is actually the one thing that makes the dreaded gargoyles so hard to deal with. Those enemies have a relatively simple attack pattern, either two slow club attacks or a rapid series of sword swings. Dodging often doesn't work here because gargoyles move forward quite a bit while doing both attacks. So it turns out blocking is the most effective way to avoid damage, but with low impact resistance you can't block the full attack and will be knocked down which often leads to taking a beating. Impact resistance is necessary for blocking those heavier attacks tougher enemies have automatically. To buff this guy, we want to enchant it with Flux. This decreases a bit of the movement speed penalty of these boots and grants a little bit of 5% lightning damage. Nothing crazy, but it fits for what we're doing. So what do we have when this is all said and done? A lightning god capable of unleashing enormous amounts of damage in the form of simple attacks. The Whirlig Spear is incredibly fast and keeps you at safe distance. Buff up with the Blessed Boon, Discipline Boon, and either Infuse Light or Lightning Varnish. You then 3-shot Blade Dancers and cut enemies down so quickly, it doesn't even feel fair. I actually recommend you never fight a Construct or Robotic enemy without an Ethereal Varnish. They're too weak to that element for you to be wasting time otherwise. However, this build outputs so much Lightning Damage you don't really need one. The Lightning Sigil alone will kill everything in the game easily. I use it as backup for harder enemies, but it really can kill most mob enemies in 2 or 3 hits. Here is how to set up for more difficult fights and the best order you should use your skills in. 
First off, I highly recommend you hotbar your skills somewhat similar to what I've done in this video. There is some wiggle room, especially with Reveal Soul, but I enjoy this setup here. Infuse your spear with Infuse Light. Pop all boons needed, Blessed or Lightning Boon every single time. Use the Enrage and Discipline boons so you deal more impact, damage, and gain access to your two power skills. At this point, you want to throw down that Wind Sigil, which, by the way, requires the Wind Altars to be activated, so don't forget to do that in each region. Skip the Sigil if it has not cooled down, but it does come back pretty quickly. Now, I prefer to start with melee attacks, so block until you get an opening. Activate Perfect Strike as soon as you see an opening, and then immediately follow with Flash Onslaught. The enemy now has both Pain and Confusion on them. Wait until the enemy attacks and quickly activate Brace. This gains you back the Discipline Boon you lost and lets you use Perfect Strike once it cools down. From this point on, you have two options. Continue to block and poke with the Spear, or bring the enemy to your Sigil where Spark will most likely insta-kill them. This sounds complex, but it really isn't. Just buff up beforehand and use your skills. Then poke with high damage. It's a pretty simple build idea that stomps enemies into the ground and gives you massive damage from the sigil if you get in trouble. If you're doubting the damage of the Hermit of Doom, just fight a Madiz. You can kill them at an incredibly fast rate with lightning and this build is perfect for that. So there you have the Hermit of Doom build. I might have rambled on a bit here, but it's important to know how everything works. The entire focus is on Lightning Sigil, Whirlig Spear, and the Silver Armor. Everything else is there for support, and even though you aren't tanky, you usually don't get insta-killed by anything. I would highly recommend this build to anyone as it's amazing and cooperative gameplay, as all players can use the Sigil, and your weather defense is so high, you often just need water and maybe a boon to deal with every region. This is a build I had some serious fun with and hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you for watching and if you found this interesting do consider leaving a like down below. Also comment down below what your thoughts are on the build. I think it has excellent quality of life and amazing damage that equates to a pretty fun playthrough. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.